A while back I made a video about the worst thing in Next.js 13, it's caching and so many people agreed with me, many people said finally someone talks about this because it's so bad. I was really happy to see that the Vercel team has acknowledged this issue, maybe through the video, maybe not, at the bottom line they have written a very good article that explains this caching behavior in minuscule detail. By making the article they obviously acknowledge the problem and notice hey this is really confusing to many people. But the frustrating thing is they don't provide a solution. Let me show you. And this is the example I made in that video. This is a very simple Next.js app and on the homepage that we're currently on we are only rendering a math.random. It doesn't matter. Let me show you what this means and then also an option to navigate away from this page to a slash other page whereas if we land on that other page we just navigate back to the homepage. That's all we're doing. So a random math number and check this out. So it's a 657 at the end. Let's navigate away and back and it is still a 657. Why is that? That's not ideal. We want a fresh math.random every time we go to the homepage. But it's always the exact same number because it is insanely aggressively cached. And Next.js has just published a whole new article explaining all the caching behavior. And this article is very well written. But there's one point in the article that's really, really annoying to me. So check this out. This is a really nice infographic of how the caching works. When a new request comes in, we are first checking a client-side cache. And then there's three server-side caching mechanisms. A full route cache, a request memoization, and a data cache. And only if all caches miss, client as well as server-side, then we go to the actual data source like your data database or even another cache if you have it in Redis where we get the data and then aggressively cache it so we almost never have to go back to the data source and that's a problem. And don't get me wrong, it's not always a problem. Let's take a look at why this might be very beneficial. So say you had three components in your app, component A, B and C, that each made a request for some data. Component A wants data 1, component B wants data 2 and component C also wants data 2. So what Next.js does with the memoization is, well, it looks at which requests do I need to make and which do I not need to make. Because we have duplicate data here, we can just make one request for data 2. And by the way, and Next.js does this automatically under the hood, you do not have to worry about this, then fetches all the data that we need and then when this request is also made it can be drawn from the cache so we only have to request the data once. That is pretty efficient and it also allows us for faster navigations. And this only works for GET requests inside of the React, so not for API routes for example because that's not inside of the React component tree. But here's the biggest problem with this, check this out. So we have four caching mechanisms, right? The client side router cache, the full route cache, the request memoization and the data cache. And let's first look at the full route cache. How can we opt out of this? So we can opt out by exporting a const dynamic and let's give this a bit more space, force dynamic. That's how we can opt out of the first server caching mechanism. That's good to know. Then we can, for the data cache, opt out. This is the purple part right here. We can opt out by using a cache no store for each fetch request or we can also export the same const dynamic force dynamic which is going to skip these two server side caching mechanisms. And then as for the memoization, if we wanted to skip that, we can pass an abort controller to the request. So we can opt out of all these server caching mechanisms. However, if you paid attention, you might notice that the problem that we're facing right here with the math.random number, this is not a server side problem. Because if I reload the page, when we fetch completely fresh data, the number is always completely different. That's exactly what we want. But this doesn't happen on page navigations, right? It's always 455 five at the end right now. And that is very bad for what we want. So this is not a server side issue, it's a client side issue. And in memory, router cache is caching the RSC payload or value. And that is why we're always seeing the exact same stale value. That is a big problem. And you know what I find really annoying in this article? It's written well, but if we take a look at how to opt out of the router cache, right? We were able to opt out of all of these. But for the router cache, client side, it was probably in the thumbnail already. If we take a look at how we can opt out, it just says it's not possible to opt out 
of the router cache. So, well, it literally straight up tells us, hey, what you want to do, <laughs> we don't do that here. Well, we could kind of do some dance runs, right? There, there are methods we could fix this, but they just seem so unnecessary to implement such a dance around features. Like, you know what would work? We could use anchor tags. Okay, that's probably the cleanest solution I could come up with. We can use anchor tags, not animate motion, what the hell. And if we now go between pages, you are gonna notice there is a fresh number each time, 849. So this is great, this works, right, Josh? Um, not really, because we're using anchor tags, everything is hard reloaded, as in the old PHP days 20 years ago. We're not benefiting from any cache. If there was text on this website that is entirely the same for all requests, it would matter. Everything is fetched only because this one number is changing. So we can't just opt out for this number or opt in for everything else. It just doesn't work. We have to fetch either everything or nothing. Some people also said we could use link prefetches, right? We could pass the prefetch into the link and just say false. So the information is not going to be prefetched once we click on the link, which is the default in Next.js. By default, it will be prefetched. Um, on hover, for example, it's still going to be prefetched. This also doesn't work, right? 207, we can navigate away, navigate back, 241, 241, and then on all subsequent requests, we're gonna receive a two for one. And the reason this was different for the very first request is because if we go up to this infographic that they posted right here, just for the first request, we're actually getting a cache miss. Then we are setting this and only on the second request are we then actually drawing from the cache. So in the first render and the second, it works normally, but afterwards it doesn't anymore. So that is pretty frustrating. I really expected something different from the article. I was hoping they would provide a very very detailed, clean way to opt out of this client-side caching behavior. They didn't, and I find that frustrating. Maybe you do too, maybe you disagree. Feel free to share your opinion in the comments, I always really appreciate it. And then I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one and bye-bye.